Hello, everyone. Hey, Steph. All right, Abby, is that it for now? Yep, we're good. I'm sure a couple okay. more will go on, but. Perfect. Well, we will go ahead and get started. Um, I'll just go by, start by introducing me and Abby. Um, I'm Caitlin Gentry. I run the agent marketing for Dana, Dana's home offices. So Columbus, Indiana and um, Richmond, Kentucky. And I've been doing social media marketing for about four years now. Um, but now primarily I started my career really freelancing um, social media and marketing, but now only work with real estate agents. So that's me, Abby. Do you want to introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Abby, and I have about three years under my belt with marketing, um, primarily in real estate, as well as a couple freelancing accounts here and there. So um, I started with Keller Williams and also doing the marketing for consultants, um, a market center in Indiana, and legacy in Kentucky, and now help Dana with some more one team stuff. And yep, that's about it. Yeah. So today's training, we're just going to kind of open the floor up to you all to ask questions. Um, it's any, really anything that has to do with social media and marketing, we would love to help you with. So let's just open it up to you all and ask away. And if you are unable to unmute or um, ask questions through audio, you can also put them in the chat and I'll kind of moderate those. I have a question. Okay. I, I knew you would be the first one. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you're not first, you're last, right? That's true. Um, so I, as you all know, have a social media presence with quite a few followers and we post um, not every day, but multiple times a week, different types of content. And I kind of wonder how I next level what you all know I'm already doing. So um, I know you see my stuff and like it and comment. So if you could just tell me kind of what the next level rung on the ladder for me would be maybe it would help someone else too so yeah so my biggest suggestion for what we're seeing in social media right now is still videos video video videos as many reels as possible um they're even saying which this sounds very extreme but they're even saying that you need to be posting two reels per day um right now which is a lot um so yeah, as many videos as you can. And they don't think that they have to be like perfect too. Like you needed to go hire a videographer for these. This can be like walking through homes on your cell phone, like just talking like a day in the life type thing. But anything that you can think of that you could turn into a video, do it. Um, because that's going to be your number one thing to get into these algorithms and get on like the specific pages for you to be seen. Um, that's my number one tip. Abby, do you want to? Yeah, I think just making sure that your content is giving some type of value, whether it's real estate or not. Um, as long as they can come to your page and know that you're a realtor, I don't think it's important for you to only post content about real estate because most of the outside world looking in probably most likely doesn't really care. Um, I think that some people do, but just for me personally, before I got into the real estate world, I didn't really know a lot about it. So I don't think content like that would necessarily intrigue me to watch your page or be interested. I think as long as your page is kind of a portfolio of what you're doing in your real estate world. Any other content would be great to add as well. And in video form as much as that sucks. Cause I hate video too. <laughs> I don't mind it. It's just the time. And I forget, I get busy with my client and I forget to video the house. Um, Caitlin, do you also, is it considered like a real with, a, um, 
a slide of different photos of a house, is that also considered a video? Like not me talking or actually videoing, but like different slides of a house that it flashes to with music? Yeah. Yeah. That is considered a um, video. So that would work too. And things that can help you as well is try and find trending audio um, when you're making these in Instagram, because believe it or not, even just the audio that you're choosing is very important as well for views. Um, but back to like what Abby was saying, by giving them more value other than real estate, just some like ideas um, that we were chatting about last week. Abby was actually in Charleston. We were just kind of going over the program, things like that. But even one of the agents down here, she honestly got kind of Instagram famous by doing a roundup of all the local events weekly. So like find something that you want to give value to other than real estate and just keep doing that because people will, people go to her page to actually look at those local events, not even for real estate. So it's more of like lifestyle and there's so much you could do in Lexington or in Columbus, like anywhere anywhere in the world where you're at there's just always something to do to give value so yeah and Steph I think that a lot of realtors always say you know like I don't have the time like but I feel like if you honestly just time blocked a certain day or a couple hours a week and said I'm gonna do all my videos during these two to three hours and then leverage the editing putting together off to someone else and schedule them. Cause now Instagram has the ability to where you can schedule reels. So if you were to take seven videos on Monday morning, you could schedule those out for even two weeks. You don't even have to have a video every day starting out. I would just commit yourself to at least two to three videos a week and time block two to three hours in the beginning or end of the week and know just kind of like a B-roll, like these are the topics I'm going to talk about. The videos don't need to be longer than 20 to 30 seconds and schedule them out through the week. I think you'll see a lot of engagement and your page. Go ahead. Yeah. I mean, do you have to change clothes? Because that's what the first thing that came to my mind was like every, I'm going to a house and then I'm telling you about an event, I need to have a different shirt. I don't think so. Y'all know I, I'm a little crazy, so. Uh, yeah. I don't think so. Adam, y'all need to go see what Adam Roach is doing right now because that's kind of what he's doing. He's getting a lot of content at once just because he doesn't have time to do it every single day and then just scheduling it. And I mean, obviously, he probably doesn't care as much about how he looks that, than maybe we do, but well, his hair always looks the same. <laughs> he doesn't have to worry about fixing his hair. That's what I told him. Yeah. It's easier. That's true. But he's doing a great job. So you all should go check his page out for sure. I'll drop it in the chat. Caitlin, who's the person down there that's doing the weekly roundup? I want to go check out their page. Um, That was, let me see. Let me find her. Um, We were literally just talking about her. I'll, I'll put it in the chat. I'll find her. So, thank, thank you. You're welcome. And her stuff too, honestly, Stephanie. Um, would be a good fit for like you all it's a lot more like lifestyle her aesthetic is like more lifestyle doing stuff like that I could see it being a good fit for you all let me pull her up anybody else I have a question um what are you guys using to build your reels are you literally just using the instagram platform or is there like another app that's more user-friendly for like templates and things like that so me personally i suggest just building it in um in directly in instagram there are apps like um vixer is a good one if you want like the aesthetic like different fonts going into like your main picture things like that um, but I still think at building them directly in Instagram is good. Abby, do you have any other apps that you use? Um, I was about to look. I, I do use apps sometimes, but I will say that Instagram doesn't really reward off of the quality of the video. It's more 
the quantity of how many you're putting out because the more videos you put out, the more time is being spent on your page, which is what Instagram wants you to do. Um, and obviously those reels, most of them can be filtered into Facebook, but so the more time that you're on Instagram, the more it's going to reward you. Um, I usually build them out on Instagram. And what I do personally is just find a trending audio that kind of fits the vibe of my video. And then I'll actually click on that audio and scroll through the other videos made with it. And sometimes it'll say like, you can use this template or, um, like somebody's already made a template that looks pretty good. So then you can just add your videos into it. My number one piece of advice for making reels is video everything that you need to beforehand. Don't actually try to make the reel while you're at an open house or whatever. Just kind of take seven, eight videos of whatever you're doing. And then later on at night, when you actually have time to look at it and piece it together, that's when you can do more of your editing. I wouldn't try to do it while you're there. I think it just takes longer and then you get frustrated and you don't have as much time to actually look at it. Hey, um, and you can put all the videos in at once. So Instagram will actually template it for you too. Abby. Yeah. Hi. Hi, what's up? Um, so what do you use to like splice reels together? I use CapCut personally. What is it called? Um, CapCut. I can throw it in the chat. And it does have some templates. I've had a hard time finding really good ones on there, but CapCut's what I use. And then I actually use the app Captions to put the words on it. Um, I find that usually if there's words on there, it's more engagement. I can't remember the percentage, but especially pre-COVID, I can't remember how many people watch reels with the audio turned off because they're at work or whatever. So having those automated captions are super important to keep people engaged in what you're, um, what you're talking about. But like I was saying with the videos, if you have seven or eight videos and you actually add them all into the reel at one time, Instagram will auto populate a couple of different trending sounds that will make a template for you. So you don't even have to think about it. Um, you just have to pick an audio that kind of goes with your video and then it kind of splits your videos up to where like the beat drops or whatever. Um, that's usually how I make ones that need to be made quickly just to get the content out there. I think a lot of people struggle with seeing like these professionally shot videos of new listings or whatever. And that's great if you have the time and financial ability to do that. But I don't think that Instagram necessarily cares if they're shot by a professional videographer. Um, they just want the quantity. Mm -hmm. They want you to be on their app using it and being social. Okay, I have another question. Go ahead. So I did a video um, of my new listing that's coming soon. And the videographer was nice enough to just grab my phone and do like a little reel on my phone. He had like an attachment that goes onto your phone that is a microphone. Mm -hmm. do, you have, yeah. do you know what kind to buy or like? I don't, but I can look back through my messages because TT... Um... Tyler, the one that does Dana's videos, he has like a ton of recommendations for even like the mount that you can hold. So it's yeah. not as shaky because I have shaky hands Yeah, um, that makes it look so much better when you're going through a house. Like it's just yeah. more clear and not as like, I don't, it just looks more professional with, with just your iPhone. Yeah. Um, so this, then, was not, you, this was not like a microphone that goes on you. It like attached to the bottom yeah. of the iPhone and for, it, it sounded like perfect. Well, let me ask TT what he would recommend. I don't personally have one, but I, I think, think it makes the biggest idea. difference. Like it looks more professional that yeah. you're not like screaming into the video. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Project. Just the one that he did on my phone was like 
I would have probably paid somebody to do it. <laughs> I'm like, I need to get these tools. Yeah. I'm sure Amazon has. Yeah. One, and then the stand. Okay. Um, Thank I'll you. ask him though what he recommends because he has a lot of those little gadgets that make a difference and make it easier. What else? If anybody else has questions and doesn't want to unmute, feel free to put them in the chat. Andrew just said he has a DJI gimbal and it's excellent. I'm pretty sure that's the one that Tyler uses. I can look on Amazon. Anything else? Best way to gain organic followers. Yeah. Emily. I think Todd was about to ask something. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I was just going to say, I don't know if I'm the only one, but if you get stumped and you want to put something of value, but you know you can't think of anything of value that day, (laughs) is there any brainstorming that people do like to come up with ideas? One of my biggest recommendations is to look at other people's stuff find some accounts that you really like and get inspiration from and not copy them, but get, take some of their ideas and implement it on your own. Um, one thing that Abby and I were going to mention today, if you all haven't already heard of chat GPT, um, it's like an AI service that can help you write stuff. So if you find some accounts that you really like, you could honestly like copy and paste some of their captions in there or just say like, say what they're giving you a value is like a new buyer tip or something. You could type into chat GPT and say like, give me five new or give me five buyer tips for whatever real estate caption and it will give you captions for you to write because sometimes like coming up with that caption or idea is the hardest part um but yeah that's my biggest tip is find some accounts you love and um get ideas off of them I think too just using the save um button on Instagram that's what I do because I have creative block a lot going 40 plus hours a week doing creative work I find myself like not even knowing I'm like what should I do what should I do and then some days I'm I could roll out 20 ideas but obviously I don't have time to do all of those so as I'm scrolling through Instagram and I see a good idea I just save it and then when I have time or know that I'm going to do something um, I'll look back through my saves and be like oh I can do that or like you could just kind of use that as um, you're brainstorming for the day and following the accounts. Yeah. I'm trying to think of that one realtor that does a great job. And if you don't know what to save, if you're on Instagram, oh, I forgot I have this background on. It's just the little bookmark to the right. So if you're on a specific post you love, um, just click the little bookmark and that will save it. Um, and then under your profile, you can find all of your saved posts. Um, so yeah, definitely do that. Because sometimes too, you'll get on like a following spree and then you'll be like, shoot, like I know I saw an account that I really like, but I can't remember their name. So like doing that saved is super important. It makes it easier. Todd, does that kind of answer your question? Yeah, that helps. Yep. That's why I want to be on here. Just get some of those kind of tips. Perfect. Emily. I even um, have put, I even have put into chat GPT, like, can you give me 50 ideas for Instagram video reels for real estate? And some of them may be less valuable, but it would at least give you, I would say 15 to 20 pretty good ideas that you could talk about just to get you started and your mind flowing. Um, Emily, the best way to gain organic followers, 
for me personally, I've just been one engaging with your accounts, I think is super important. And then two, following other accounts that are similar to you. Um, So I always know like whenever I kind of go on like a following spree, I always gain a ton of followers back. Um, So that also are like legitimate accounts that are interested in the same stuff that I'm in interested in. So that's one of my biggest tips on um, getting organic followers and just staying consistent and posting too. Um, so like, you know, stories, everything that we've talked about. Um, another thing too, that I just thought about with organic followers is hashtags are still very important. <laughs> So coming up with those hashtags that will land people to your page um, is still super important, as well as location. Um, Having your location turned on on Instagram, like typing in where you're at is actually very important. Um, So think about that. Also, too, just another tip. I've seen a lot of um, like influencers and just other people in um social media and marketing doing this to switch up your location too. So like a Columbus, for example, make sure you're tagging. Like if you're in Dublin, tag Dublin, tag restaurants. Like if you're working out of a coffee shop that day, even if the post has nothing to do with the coffee shop, like tag that location because people are always looking for specific areas too. Um, so I've seen a lot of good following from doing that as well. And does everybody know what I'm talking about on like the location piece, especially on Instagram? Steph, no. Okay. So when you're making a post, um, let me just pull it up so I can walk you through it. You're picking the picture. You're writing the caption. Oh, tagging people and products, especially people too. Um, that's important for because that then shows up on their page under tag post. I find stuff all the time. Like this is a really good example. I had a girl message me. I had on a dress and um, I tagged the company of the dress. Somebody found my page to ask me about sizing on that specific dress and and I gained a follower from it. So like by me tagging that brand, somebody found me, followed me and engaged with my account. So stuff like that. So whenever you're making a post, tag the people or the products. The location is just underneath. Uh, You can't see it on my phone. But whenever you're making the post, it says add location. And from there, you can just type in wherever you're at. What app are y'all using for chat GPT? Because it seems like there's a ton. Go ahead. Abby. I use Safari because I'm I don't want to pay twenty four dollars a month for it. <laughs> so I just get on Safari and type in Chat GPT. Um, I've had it for a while. I know that I don't have to pay for it. I'm not sure if that's different now. Um, I think if you download the app, then you have to pay for it. But if you just use it on Safari, it's fine. Is it is it just like a website? Is it just... Yeah. I typed yeah. in chat GPT and it brought up like... Um, so I'll actually put the one that I use in the chat. Um, and then whenever you click on it to get Mm -hmm. started, it's the chat GPT option. Now everybody's doing these like AI photos and all of that, which you can do within this open AI app. Um, but yeah, you can just click on the chat GPT and, um, use that from there. And if you all are interested in chat GPT, I can go more into it. I just want to be respectful of other people's questions as well. How many of you are using chat GPT right now in your business? You can raise your virtual hand too. 
do you feel like it's helped you? Like, do you like the platform? Well, I should say Emily uses it. <laughs> Let's be honest. And she loves it. And we do it for marketing, social media posts, and descriptions of houses to get different words that we're not used to using. So she uses it for all of those things. Any letters we write, um, you know, like farming letters, um, um, why did my brain just go uh, golden letters, any of that stuff. We use it for a bit of the language. It doesn't always sound like me. And so I do change it sometimes, but, and it's still really helpful. Yes. I think definitely getting the base information in chat GPT is super helpful. And then you can kind of customize it to your brand and your voice. Um, sometimes I'll read it. And it's like super bubbly and like all these crazy words. And I'm like, people already know that that I'm not the one typing that. Um, but you can prompt chat, chat GPT as well for, I'll try to find one that I used recently for basically anything. Um, I have been putting more information about like our brand as one team in there. And I found that the more information that you give chat GPT, the more catered it's going to be to your brand. So if you, you can just straight up be like, Hey, I want you to make captions for my new listings. Um, like what questions do you have for me? And it'll give you like five or six questions. And if you answer those, it's going to sound more like you, more like your brand. It's not going to have those words in there that you probably wouldn't use. Um, so there is a little bit of background work that you can do in ChatGPT to customize it more for you. And then you don't have to go back every time and say, make it more casual or make it more professional or however you're adjusting the prompt itself. Well, we learned on another class that you say you start it with, um, speak like a realtor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a great, yes. Yes. I always put like, I am a realtor or I work for a real estate company or something to give it more context of like what my caption or whatever new listing description would be from. Um, there's all, I don't know if you all have TikTok, but TikTok has taught me so much about chat GPT and like the prompts that you can, they have like a ton of prompts. There's pages on TikTok that just give you prompts for business, real estate, whatever you're using it for, marketing. Um, that's where I've got most of my ideas from. I use chat GPT for every listing description and it also completely redone all of my listing presentations and it does all of my blog posts and it does probably 90% of anything that I do that's topped out. And if you create an account on it and the more you use that account, the more it learns you. And the first thing that I did is uh, I asked it to ask me 50 questions about my business. Yes. And also told it um, uh, specific words to use. Like I use the word y'all a lot in real life. So I made sure to, um, it states in there, like I, I've put somewhere in there, replace from moving forward, do not put your, put y'all. And so in every time, instead of your, it says y'all, just little things like that. And, uh, but you have to have an account and you have to use that account every single time. Yeah. Yeah. That's so, that's such a good idea. I never thought about changing the words. Um, yeah, on my account, like it has different folders for everything that I use it for. So like if you were to have a new listing and you kind of prompted it beforehand, then the next time you got a listing, all you would have to do is say, make a similar cap, make a similar listing, um, remark for this address. And it would, I mean, you just put in the base information, like five bath or five bed, two bath, like whatever it is. And it would create the caption for you. Um, it's, it's a game changer. I think it's gonna take some people's jobs and relieve people of a financial commitment to, I mean, I don't, Andrew, do you have an assistant? I do have an assistant and I'm 
teaching her now how to use it. But it, 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 it could very easily take her job if I wanted it to. Yeah. Yeah. It has maximized my capacity a ton. Like I've been able to take on more just by utilizing this tool for sure. Um, Cause one of the things that I struggle with a lot is sitting in like writing captions and writing whatever. It just takes a long time to make it sound good. Um, especially if you're not as talented of a writer um, and I suck at grammar. So that's like another perk is it makes sure that, you know, commas and punctuation is correct and words are spelled right. Um, I love it. I would highly recommend using it. Something else I've done too, is I created an Etsy account with just real estate stuff in it. And so every, every piece of verbiage just came from chat GBT and now I'm just getting passive income on it. That's so smart. I, I need to do that. Video. I know. <laughs> Well, I, I bought a listing presentation on there and then I, cause I just liked the way the, the design of it and I didn't have time to create it myself. And mm-hmm. then I realized that everything was chat GBT. Yeah. I just, I just spent, you know, a weekend creating all kinds of graphics and then just applying it in. And I mean, I'm up to almost a thousand sales now. So that's crazy. Well, I know there's like some people selling subscriptions to social media captions and other things regarding that. And I've seen some examples and they're they're straight from chat GPT. I mean, they're probably customized a little bit, but I would say don't pay for that stuff if you see that come across Instagram or promoted because you could probably get the same thing in chat GPT um, with no cost. What else do we have on there? Is there any other topics that anybody had questions about? Maybe not relating to Instagram or chat GPT or video. What should you post? On your story versus feed? That's a really good question. That is a good um, I love stories because I feel like they can be way more casual. And this might just be my generation, but I watch stories more than I actually ever look through the feed. Um, Because I, I feel like it tells more about like their personal life and like what they're actually doing day to day. And it's, it's so hard for me to be consistent with stories because I also want to like be present where I am. So a lot of the times I'll just like take pictures. This is just personal. This has nothing to do with real estate, but if I go to breakfast, like I'll take a picture of my coffee or my food or whatever it is. And then if we go somewhere else, like I just take pictures on my actual camera roll. And then at the end of the day, like I'll just blast out like 10 different stories of what I did during the day. Um, if you're not like as picky about what it looks like, I think you could just go ahead and post it as you're doing it. But honestly, anything that you're doing, like right now you could take a picture of being on this training or what you're doing, like working wise, or just to show people that, I don't know, more of your day-to-day life. I think people enjoy seeing like the background work that goes into everybody. Yeah. I agree, Abby. Yeah, and I like what Andrew said. Stories aren't serious as a post because it goes away in 24 hours. So, and also to store, even put the content aside, stories are also important because that is a one more chance for you to get in front of somebody on social media. So, um, yeah, I would try and post those as well um, as much as you can. One of the best advice, uh, I think Adam actually told me this, go through who's watching your stories and make a list because those are the people that are seeing your content every day. Make a list and start engaging with their page. Start figuring out like what type of people they are. Are they, you know, younger people? Are they older people do they have families like what's that what content do they want to see and I think Adam even like messages some people and is like hey like what content on my page do you like what content do you not like just to get them more engaged 
because really, even if you have 2,500 followers, probably only two to 300 are actually seeing your content. And those are going to, you're, you can gather that information from posting stories. Um, that's going to tell you who's actually seeing your content, who, like who you're showing up in their algorithm. And that's another great thing that Andrew put in the chat um, that he made a group on Facebook with to increase his organic reach. And he just engages with them. What what do you do, Andrew? Like once a day, once a week. So I, I create, I put all of my clients into one group. It's not like an actual group that they had to go in and accept. It's just like a, a, a for myself, a group of, specific people and I can click on that uh, on that group you have to be on a desktop I believe and then it will only show the post of those people that are in that group so I can spend 15 minutes and interact with every single one of those people and, and what they posted in the past few days and then um, and that will in return on Facebook make them make me show up more in their algorithms too but yeah yes don't post and ghost you all, if you're going to post something, then like stay on the app for just five to 10 minutes, like some people's photos, comment, whoever the people are that you want to engage with your content, make sure that you're also engaging with theirs because that's going to make your page show up more on in their algorithm. Um, so if you want to be super specific and have a luxury clientele, then go engage with a bunch of people that are buying luxurious homes or luxurious things or whatever, looking like they're living more of a luxurious lifestyle. I would engage with those people because then that in turn, your page is going to start showing up on their stuff as well. Abby, I just wanted to chime in on something else. I've been in the car and I didn't get to say anything. As far as video goes, I've noticed that I've seen people say this and I've noticed I've had success with it. You have to grab the watcher's attention in like the first three to one to three seconds. Like you have to get their attention because I'm guilty for it too. I'll see something and they're taking their time introducing themselves or like if they're not keeping my attention, I'll scroll too. Mm -hmm. All of our brains work the same. And like what you were saying about posting ghosts just now, because I used to posting ghosts and I would still have a little bit of luck out of it, especially on TikTok. But I've noticed now that I get a little bit more engagement when I don't post and ghost. I don't stay on, at least for TikTok anyway, I don't stay on TikTok and just keep replying to comments. I'll like post it. And then maybe five, 10, 10 minutes later, I'll get back on and reply to some comments, get off of TikTok. That's what I've had luck with. Like one thing I have learned and heard, I don't know how true it is, but if you post and ghost, yes, TikTok is going to push your video out and try to send you notifications to get you back in. But if you post and you stay on there for 20 minutes, just scrolling, they know you're in the app and they're not going to push your video out as much. So that's why I always post and I ghost for like 10 minutes and then I'll jump back on, reply to some comments and then, you know, kind of space it out from there. Yeah. But videos that I have had blow up are the ones where you can tell that I've caught the watcher's attention in like the first one to three seconds. And mm -hmm. honestly, it's not been real estate stuff. It's been me on there acting stupid. But now I have almost 6,000 followers on TikTok and my real estate videos don't blow up as much, but I showed a house that I got as a referral. And whenever they walked in, it was a young couple and they said, we saw you on TikTok. And I was like, well, you should have messaged me there because I wouldn't have to pay a referral fee on you now. But m people who I needed to see my video were seeing my video. And again, like what Caitlin was saying, I tagged the location. And a lot of the times if I'm in Richmond making a video, I'll tag Lexington because I feel like those will push out harder than the Richmond ones will. Or if I'm in Berea or wherever, I'll tag like the next biggest place and I'll put the address in the description or something and say, this is where I am. So I'm not totally lying to them, but tagging a bigger location will help push the video out more too, is what I've noticed. Or at least that's what's happened for me. That's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. You definitely have to grab their attention within the first three seconds. Um, otherwise, one, you don't even, it doesn't even count as a view. So if you are like, hi, I'm Kate, you know, you could easily swipe it onto the next very quickly. So, um, yeah, that's why one thing too, like if you do go and watch some of Adam Roach's stuff, um, just kind of watch, he will, I know his are like a little bit out there right now, but he, they do grab your attention. Like I'll even catch myself watching the whole thing. So like, that'll kind of give you some like, 
intro captions um, ideas too. I've noticed on Adams too that he uses those, like he'll put the captions on his videos and it'll highlight a word as he speaks. Yeah. And the ones that I have before are just like the auto-generated ones from TikTok or it'll show like a group of words at a time and just keep scrolling through them. And like our brains are addicted to all the colors and the flashing and stuff because I've seen stuff on TikTok too about how if you want to get off your phone, you can turn on your gray scale or something and it kind of dims down the colors. So you aren't as addicted to your phone. But whenever our brains see all those flashing colors and a lot of things happen on the screen, it keeps our attention. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he actually uses an app. Abby, do you know which one that is? I I don't use that one. I don't. Uh, use, I mainly don't use it because it's just not my style, like aesthetic for social media. But um, the person that he got that app from, he's had a ton of ton of success using it, like grabbing people's attention. So we will get that from him. Um, Abby and I plan on doing like something on a monthly basis so we can also to like come back and give you some more um ideas too but I'll write that note and get that app that Adam uses and I think too like the harsh reality is that if this isn't your thing it's not like gonna make or break your business I don't think necessarily but I do think that there's a huge opportunity with my generation in particular on social media and gaining clientele from social media. And I mean, my biggest advice is if you're going to do it, just do it. Like don't, cause the consistency is everything. I mean, if you can commit yourself to even doing twice a week, that's better than making a post and then waiting another month and making another post like Instagram is not going to pick your page up in their algorithm um if you're doing it that way rather than just trying to be as consistent as you can be some people are rolling out 10 videos a week that's not realistic for everybody um nor may it be your personality it's not mine for sure <laughs> but i do think that if you want to be intentional the video and consistency is probably the biggest thing that I'm seeing right now. Um, and also think about like, when do you get on social media? This was a huge realization for me. I'm not a morning person. I The first thing that I do is check my email and then I have to like get my coffee and start doing other tasks. So I don't really get on social media in the morning. I'm more of a night owl, but I feel like, other people like the first thing they do is open up Facebook. So if you're even scheduling post, I would recommend doing it either first thing in the morning or probably that eight, nine, 10 mark at night, because that's when most of the people are going to be on those pages. And then obviously if the algorithm picks it up, then it'll be sh shot out all throughout the day. But I would say that's your best chance. Yeah, 7 a.m., 7 p.m. That's where I've seen the most success is 7 a.m., 7 p.m. Because most people are either getting on before the 8 to 9 mark or after the 5 to 6 mark. Yeah. And to check, take, a, take some time and look at your insights on both Facebook and Instagram um, because that will show when are your when are your followers the most active um because like Abby's followers might be totally different than Steph your followers you know so um take a look at that and also go back and look to see like did people actually save your post or like what's getting the most engagement and try and like replicate some of that again um that's what I kind of look at um to decide like what I'm going to post about. Yeah. I won't go into a big spill with command, but I attached our YouTube link. I would say the top videos I would recommend watching to go into farther detail of how you can actually implement some of this stuff is the Dan DeMott four to 34 million was a great training. He's awesome. He's utilizing command um for a lot of his touches on social media because that's all it is it's just a touch um and then Travis Cox in, from KW Louisville he did a I forget what that one's called but it was like a 60 touch 
campaign his was insane he like adds five people to his database every day realtors not realtors um he's messaging people he's using facebook and instagram as some of his touches so that's a really good training and then there's a couple panels on there that are geared towards like building your brand and um I know that we kind of like go off topic on those and start talking about some Instagram and Facebook stuff. So if you're wanting more training regarding that, there are some videos on our YouTube that are really good for like the actual implementation of it. We use some of Dan DeMott's um, information after his class and I got 60 leads, which was too many (laughs) for me. Um, And so, I, I mean... I haven't even had time to call those dang people. Yeah. But his information, that was one of the best social media classes I've been doing a long time. What I will say though, and maybe you can help me with this or any anybody may have the same experience. We run them on Instagram and Facebook and almost 99% of our leads come to Facebook, not Instagram. I was about to say that I had that realization just doing like the market center um, social media and stuff. Because my generation, I like Instagram, like I get on Instagram more, but I found that most people that are probably buying houses, because I'm not buying houses, um, and neither are my friends. So (laughs) if you're wanting to get people that are buying houses, I would get on Facebook because I think most of the age, like they're on Facebook more and I don't know. I feel like Facebook's algorithm just is a little bit better for if you're friends with people and stuff. I think Instagram's algorithm for followers and stuff is probably at a significantly lower percentage with the engagement that you're with people that are actually seeing your content. I would say Facebook, more people that are your friends are seeing it. Would you agree with that, Caitlin? I I, I could be completely wrong, but I get a ton of more engagement just on the market center pages from Facebook because most of our agents are on Facebook. Yeah, I agree. Well, and from a personal standpoint, I don't see a lot of my friends pop up on my Instagram anymore. It's like every third or fourth post is like a closet company or it's all ads now. So, and the only time I'm seeing what's going on with my people is when I'm looking at their stories. Mm-hmm. So I'm sure it's happening on the flip side with people not seeing me come up. Yeah. Yeah. I think definitely focusing on one and the, the good thing about it is that most posts from Instagram or Facebook will filter to the other one. So either way you're going to capture your audience. Um, But as far as like engaging with your people, I would kind of see where you're getting more engagement and maybe just focus on, engaging with them on Facebook or engaging with them on Instagram um, or both. If you have time, I don't think there's a rhyme or reason for either, but it's just where your people are at. I think Travis said that he does more Facebook because that's where he's gotten more leads. And if you're using command, that's going to Facebook. So I'm going to have to get back on Facebook. I turned 25 this year, so I guess that's my entry way to getting on Facebook. (laughs) I've actually had really good luck with Facebook. I've got some cousins who live here in, well, they live in Berea, but they're looking for a place to rent in my hometown. So I posted on Facebook and I was like, hey, I've got somebody looking for rent. If it makes sense for them to buy something, they will. But so many people from my hometown have already messaged me saying like, I know so-and-so has this for rent or like so-and-so has talked about selling something. And even me sharing other agents' listings, if I see, especially if it's in my market center, if I see somebody share Robin's listing, I know Robin doesn't care if I share her listing, so I don't need to ask for permission. But but especially those three twos, like those starter houses, even if it's not people that I'm directly friends with, my friends will share it and then they reach out to me. So I've had a lot of luck with Facebook, surprisingly. And you can share my listings anytime, friend. I absolutely will. Speaking of that, sharing other people's listings too. I like that you brought that up, Jake, because I know one of my good friends down here in Charleston, she is a primarily a luxury agent. And if you're trying to get into that luxury market, she reshares, she does a post every Monday 
called like Million Dollar Monday. And she doesn't necessarily have million dollar listings every week. So like reaching out to, and honestly, most agents don't care because that's getting their listing more visibility as long as you're tagging them and, you know, giving them the credit, all of that. So like little stuff like that, that could help you because like what Jake said, when you're sharing that automatically puts you, it makes it seem like that is your listing almost and that you are more active in real estate, even if you might haven't had a listing in whatever, a couple months, or you could be primarily a buyer's agent, things like that. So um, I love the idea of sharing other people's listings. And think about just people in the market center. I mean, KW is so good with like collaboration and all of that. And I would say for the most part, people would not care, but you could even shoot the, if you make a post and it's a listing or anything, you could shoot it through DMs and be like, Hey, would you care to share this on your page? Nine times out of 10, they're, they won't care. I have friends that are like trying to get into like the influencer world and all of that. And I just know that they want me to share their stuff. So now it's like, they don't even have to ask me. I just share it. Um, but that's a great way to just, I mean, if you send it to me, I'll share it. <laughs> so. Curtis Rose used to do that a lot. I used to get a like oh, yeah. week and I would go through my stories after I shared it and like five people I follow shared it. So it's on telling who else that I don't follow and Curtis's sphere shared it. So yeah. like what Abby's saying, like it is so easy just to say, hey, we, do you care to share this on your story? And yeah. more times than not, they're going to. And the, I was going to mention earlier about the Facebook thing. I crack up when people post like looking for recommendations and stuff. And the comment section is filled because one thing about people in general is everybody wants to give an opinion. Like if they can give an opinion, I mean, you've got, I mean, you've got, you know, the grannies on Facebook. I mean, they're going to be typing in the comment section. They're in the comment section, like telling everybody you're cute, whatever. But this one post in particular all he said was looking for recommendations to increase the look of our curb appeal. And he's a realtor. And I know he did this on purpose. And he has 79 comments. Like that's insane. It continues to pop up on my Facebook feed because he got so many comments. Um, so anything that you can post, I know Jenny Maddie Oak posts some funny things on Facebook that like people comment on and people don't think anything of it, but I'm sure she kind of does it to get engagement as well so just one-off things that you think oh people might have an opinion on this post that just post a picture and say looking for recommendations or even if you're not like you will get a ton of engagement for that stuff as well and that's what really like getting engagement is what really helps you get into the algorithms um but one question that we did miss in the chat before we have to wrap it up. Our thoughts on adding collaborators. Um, yes, definitely. Because a lot of people are have these business accounts that aren't necessarily getting engagement. And now that you have the option to have both post together on one page, definitely do that. Um, it will help with the engagement of the post. It'll get people over to your business account or whatever the situation is but yeah I'm a huge um proponent of having the collaborators in there I I like that for sure I don't think there's really any downside to it at all we get a ton of engagement if we collab with like Dana's personal page that's like where we get most of our engagement for other accounts um and it's just because she has more of the organic reach than the other pages do but yeah, yeah, I love the collaborators. I didn't know that you could add more than one. That's news to me. So thanks for sharing that. Yeah, I guess I didn't either. Any other last minute questions, ahas, advice? Thanks, Steph. Well, thank you all for being on and um, me and Abby plan on maybe keeping this like a little series. Like next month we've chatted about instead of doing Facebook and Instagram, talking about the importance of like Google posting 
um, because that's like a whole nother beast in itself. So stay tuned for next month. Um, we'll do a series on Google My Business and posting on there and um, yeah, the importance of that. So yeah, come back next month. I definitely think it's a good idea to keep doing it for, I mean, social media changes all the time and yeah. random tidbit before we get off here. My cousin in Tennessee, she doesn't have a lot of YouTube subscribers, but YouTube is like her primary lead source now. So that's something that we could look into. Cause I know a lot of people in the one team market centers don't do YouTube. If they do, I haven't seen them. Yeah. But just like yeah, YouTube's thing. huge. Yeah. It's huge. It's the number two search engine behind Google. Like that's how much people are on YouTube looking for stuff. So yeah, if you can be like the expert in whatever on YouTube is major. And also if you ever have any questions about social media or like need, because I know sometimes it's easier to have more hands on, like showing you actually how to make a reel and doing all of that stuff, get on YouTube. I learn a ton of stuff from YouTube. I'll just type in how to do this or whatever. That's how I've learned a lot is just watching YouTube videos. Um, so if you ever have a question and we don't have a training going on or can't get a hold of somebody that knows how to do it, um, definitely use that as a resource. I know a lot of people always forget about that search engine, but I'll put my number in the chat. If you all have any questions, feel free to text me. I'm not the greatest person at texting back. You can call me too. Um, but I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. I hate texting. You have to give Abby some time to reply. <laughs> it might be like at 1 a.m. when I reply, but I'll reply. Awesome. Well, Thanks thank for getting on, everybody. Yes. Abby, you can't reply to us old people on Facebook at 1 a.m. I know. That's why I don't reply a lot of the time because I feel like I'm going to wake somebody up. <laughs> I don't know. Just put it on do not disturb, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> all right, y'all. Thank, right, you, girl. Girl. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks. Bye. Thank you all. Have a good week. See you all.